Hey, what's up my fellow creatives? Adrian Boysell here. You know, I've done hundreds of really cool logos that I'm super proud of, but today I wanna to show you guys the five that I've redesigned over the course of my last 15 years. And I'm gonna go from the oldest to newest, and there's a lot more that I wish I could include in this, but there's just not enough time. So if you love this video, if this is something you're looking for, I'd love to hear in the comments at the end of this video what you thought, but definitely let me know. We're gonna go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna show you the five redesigned logos that I've done that I'm extremely proud of that I just wanna show off to you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the first logo I wanna show you is one of the oldest ones that I redesigned for a really old brand. This brand's been around since the 30s or 40s, um, and it's been redesigned a bunch of times, but this was their most recent before they met me, and they had this little outline of a cow. Now they have this big cow statue that's outside their building that everybody knows called Sir Rose. So they didn't wanna lose that cow element because it's something that's really important. Um, and so you got Roseville, Meat, and then Co. So it's not even the full words of their company, but that's fine. Um, and then Henry Enterprises Inc., which is their DBA. Why they put that in their logo, I don't know why they felt like that was necessary. And then of course, it's in a circle and the cow was headed backwards. So I just really didn't care for that, to be honest with you. So we actually sold them a branding package. This is coming up seven, eight years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. And we redid their logo and we came up with something that I felt was very classic was really true. So I took the Sir Rose, took pictures of it, and then redrew the character and added him, him in here to the logo and faced him the other direction. I don't know about you, but for me, I don't really like seeing logos that have the characters or the anything in it facing backwards, like it's moving the wrong direction. I like everything moving forward, so I flipped it, moved it the other way. Nice, clean, simple illustration, and then you can see here, it could be used just by itself with just this Rosewell Meat Company without the cow. I don't think that the cow was so important that it needed to be inside of and incorporated into every logo. So I just wanted to kind of have it just be a character that could be used alongside of it or it could be used alone. So you can see here, this brand was established in 1946. So it's been a really, really long time. And now I have the full company underneath. So I used a really classic old school kind of font here. I don't remember what font that was, but this is one that I was super proud of to redesign for a company that had been around a long time. And seeing as, as I was born in Roseville, this was something I felt was a really neat project that I could put my thumbprint, my DNA, my element of my personality into their brand. So this is what I got to do. So this is the first one I wanna show you. Now, the next one I wanna show you is also a very cool logo, and that is Roof Doctors. It didn't start off that way. As you can see here in this logo design, we'll pull this up here. There you go. You can see there was a lot going on. They had Wilfley Enterprises Inc. It's funny how Rosal meets and these guys did the same thing where they stuck Wilfley Enterprises DBA. They put their DBA in there and then their roof dockers or doc. I think that's supposed to be doctors, right? Well, you can see they had a lot of elements going on. Their license number was in it. They're insured their year since 1987. I felt like it just took away from their brand and took away from the focus and their name. And so I also saw that they had an RX logo in there and it was just this little icon and there's the RX and then there's the little cross and then there's the blue line. Just a lot going on and this kind of looks generic to me. So I wanted to redesign it and this is the redesign. Now you can see I did a lot of different things here. I took out this little cross and I actually moved it inside the house. I got rid of the RX because it just didn't apply to the business. It didn't make any sense to be honest, the RX. So it's not a prescription. Um, and so I wanted to take that out and I put the little medic symbol inside here and then I took the T and I put a T back in and then I had it be kind of dead beep, 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 beep. They resuscitated it, right? Because they're resuscitating the roof. So I wanted to honestly drop this little line, but the customer absolutely insisted that they needed to have this line in there because it was a part of their brand that they had for years and years and years. So I let them keep it, but I tried to make it a little bit better. Now you look at this overall logo here and you can see what I did with the R and the roof. I wanted to make a concept where it integrated all three together. And at, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna share three secrets that I have when it comes to logo designs that I use and how I was able to accomplish this. And this is what I want you to be able to start incorporating into your logo designs. And it's gonna make a big difference. So let's jump over to the next one. All right, so this next one here is another really great brand, great client of ours. This one's more recent, and this is Gingery Hammer and Schneiderman. Now this used to be called Gingery Law and Gingery Law Firm, but they added on another partner, two more partners to be specific, and they came up with this new logo for themselves. Actually, the one of the founders, Mr. Schneiderman here, did this concept. I'm not a fan of it. I think these little sticks, it looks architectural. It looks more of like a builder and just really didn't fit, but I loved the shape and the direction of this. So what I did is I isolated that 
And then I recreated the G, the H, which you can see here in the negative space in the middle, and the S, and I took that same shape, which is kind of the, the uh, diamond shape, took the square and I made it a diamond. I put that in there and then I used pretty much the same font, uh, but made it clean and I aligned everything. So everything was nice and balanced. And I think this one's really nice. I tried to keep their same colors, gave them that richness, but I think that this has a lot more of a memorable look to it, which is really, really important. Now let's jump over to the next one. This one was a logo I did about two years ago, and this is one I'm really, really proud of. So we probably did over a hundred concepts. I'm not exaggerating. I had multiple designers working on this project, over a hundred concepts. And when we did this project, this was their original thing they were starting with. I went back and forth with the founder of this company, who's a friend of mine, and he was throwing all kinds of like sports logos and different ideas. And we tried a lot of different things and none of it was working. And then one night in the middle of the night, it was keeping me up uh, for days trying to figure out this logo because I just really wanted to knock it out of the park. And I realized, I woke up out of my sleep and realized that the logo didn't need a logo mark, that the word itself, next gen, was the logo. So what I did, is I just took away this icon completely and I redid next gen. N-E-X-G-E-N, six letters, super simple. And I saw in my dream that I had these big concrete letters just falling from the sky and hitting the ground and dust coming up and making a loud sound. And the X was like these big plastic kind of just huge pipes that came and they crossed each other. And so I literally woke up that night and drew this on a piece of paper and sent it to him. And in the morning, I got a text message and he said, that's it. And so this is where Next Gen Septics went from Next Gen Septics LLC to nextgenseptics.com. And we really were able to transform this brand and give it the look and feel that it really needed. So this is what I'm really proud of, one that I want to show you guys off. And this applies, this one you'll see here applies to the three rules that I'm going to share with you, the three secrets that I have when it comes to great logo design that you'll see here matches. So this was the next one. This is our most recent redesign. Uh, give you a little bit of background. There's a gentleman that I did a video about uh, in my GOATS video, the greatest graphic designers of all time. And one of the guys I talked about in there was David Soto, who's AKA Dope. And I love this guy. He's one of my favorite graphic designers, one of the best out there. And he happens to be the lead designer for Lucky Brand, which I thought was really neat. And I didn't know that until after I started the project. I just loved his work. But as I got to know him and I started building a relationship with him, which is a kind of a key and a secret in itself for you guys, as I started to realize that he was deeply connected and his gifting goes way beyond just doing these. So what I wanted to do was take them away from their kiddish look like a five-year-old kid store. And I wanted to move it into something a little bit more serious, a little bit more established, a little bit more sophisticated and something that was hand-drawn. This has that hand-drawn feel, but it looks like a five-year-old's writing. So instead we did a hand-drawn hand logo um, in Illustrator with David Soto. He actually created this original version. I made some of my own adjustments on it myself. I took the E and I flipped it and I rotated it. I put a tail on it. I made that the A and that was actually not in his original design. It was just like basically like a circle with a line on the back. And I really wanted to make everything uniform. So I blended that together, added that element into it made a couple other changes myself. And this is what we ended up with. I'm super proud of this logo. There's going to be multiple locations for this business. It's going to be a big, franchise type company. So I'm excited to kind of see how this brand evolved. And we also have other versions of this logo too. So this is overall the five logos I want to show you, but I know you guys have waited this whole video to get to the nuts and bolts of what you really want. And that's the rules of how you make logo designs and transform and redesign logos and make them look like this. There's three rules that I follow and you can look at, listen and check out Sagi Haviv's stuff on YouTube. He's a really well-known graphic designer, logo designer, but you want your logo to be simple which you can see these ones really are. And as you really, one of the first jobs of looking at a logo design is how can I make this simpler? Because most people try to do too much and go over the top to make it so unique that it ends up becoming cluttered and busy. So simple, memorable. How do I make this kind of imprint into somebody's brain? What is it that's going to make it unique? Well, something hand drawn and artistic like this is going to make it more unique. And the red, the bright red apple is also going to be unique. I wasn't going to move them away from that, but I wanted to make the apple kind of grow and become a little bit more uh, sophisticated than just a kid looking little school teacher apple. You can see here the memorable really hits hard with the green separating here in next gen and the big X with the two pipes. That one was really cool. And you can see here inside of memorable, this is a lot more memorable than this little stick logo. So that's a really big key and a second rule. And then the last one is applicable. How does it apply to the business? Well, this is a really strong shape, the diamond shape. It applies because it's sophisticated, it's classy, it's got a really nice typography, 
You can see the Roof Doctors one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, next gen, you know, he's got the water and it's wastewater treatment, which we did drop out of the logo, but you got the two pipes in there. So that one's also really, really great. And then if you look at the applicable on here, right, salad wraps and more, this one also has their apple and it is applicable to their brand, Garden of Eden, Farm to Fort Goodness. So simple, memorable, applicable. These are three keys you have to have when you're redesigning a logo. This is where I would start. And also, also you want to do some good research to make sure and see what other competitors are out there if there's already brands with these names. So this is what I want to show you guys. I hope you love it. I hope this was super helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. Um, throw a like on this video. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that as well because I'm posting a lot of content. I have a lot more coming and we have other exciting stuff that I want to tell you about too. So if you want to get engaged with me, you want to get to know me better, get to know the community that I'm building and be part of that community. I want to invite you to the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook. There's a link down in the description. Check that out. I'd love to see you guys there. Make sure you answer all of the questions or I will hit deny and decline it. And I will not even give you a second chance. I want quality, not quantity. We have a really, really high level group. And I would love to have you there. So that's what I got for you guys today. I'm Adrian Boysell. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, keep looking up.